Hello and welcome Exiles to day number five of the 10 Divine Challenge. Today we went with Stormbrind, which is a skill where you place runes on the ground and you use a separate keybind to then charge the runes and then blow them up. All these runes can overlap, they can hit the same target, and they can deal quite a bit of damage because when they're charged three times, they're dealing 300% more damage. So essentially, the base skill itself has a hit amount of 500 to 1500, and then you multiply that by four to get 300% more damage because it's been charged three times. The difficulty with this skill is when you put the rune down to charge the runes, you need to increase the mana cost of the second portion of the skill, which is Rune Blast. This skill at base costs 23 mana. It takes 28 mana to charge a rune once. So as you can imagine, if you're trying to charge a bunch of runes up very fast and it takes 28 mana and you can only do 23 at a time, well, even though it has a fast cast time, it's still gonna take a while to get those 12 casts in just to blow up a section of basically nine runes. So my solution for that is Indigon to increase the mana cost. It used to be that you could get flat mana cost from gloves. I think Voidbringers used to give flat mana cost, and that was a solution that worked without forcing you into Indigon, but currently that solution is gone. That got Those gloves got reworked. There is no longer any sources of flat mana as far as I know. So in order to play this skill, you kind of have to go Indigon to scale the mana cost just so you can charge up the runes faster to get those pops off faster. Now, on combination with Rune Blast, on combination with all this, I decided to go Pathfinder. My idea, my thought process was high sustain on flasks and get try Ellie Res Flask for mitigation along with Lavianas. The combination of Lavianas with this build basically is if I cast something like Arcane Cloak, which is going to give me a lot of flat damage, right? It's, it's an 8k Arcane Cloak or whatever it is. That's going to give me a lot of flat damage. Unfortunately, when I do that, I'm spending a lot of mana right away, which means my Indigon, my Indigon cost gets ramped. So when I go to place runes, I'm out of mana very, very quickly. I only get to place like, you know, nine or whatever it is. And then to charge those up, well, if I did it right away, I wouldn't have had the, my mana cost would have been too high. It would have instantly popped. I wouldn't have charged the runes. So the idea is I press this, then I use Laviana so I can place all my runes. And once the mana goes up, then I go in for the big pop where I have the mana cost of Arcane Cloak, I have the mana cost of the Rune Blast all charged into my Indigon for a big one shot of damage. So that's why I'm doing Lavianas. It's, it leads to a weird play style where it's like, place your runes with Lavianas up, wait for Lavianas to get full, and then pop it like you would normally. So that's how I'm going about it. It's a little bit of an awkward play style. It's clunky. It sure is not great for map clear, but it hits pretty hard. And for a skill that no one plays, you know, it actually is quite viable for endgame bosses, even on a 10 divine budget. We ended up doing quite well, getting every boss except for Exarch and Cirrus. Exarch, I should have been able to finish because I could tank the ball phase. I was basically one good pop away from finishing him off, but I couldn't do my flame dash to avoid the annihilation mod because in in Cirrus or not in Cirrus in Exarch he has the cooldown recovery modifier that you get where it basically deletes your CDR if you walk on the ground and it lasts for 10 seconds. I stepped on that, which means my flame dash no longer would have CDR, and thus he went to do Annihilation and I couldn't dodge it. Ultimately, you know, maybe if I went for a shield, then I could shield charge around and I would never die in that fight, or I wouldn't die as easily, and it would be probably a much more safe win for me. But ultimately, I went for two big, thick mana wands with cast speed, and I thought, you know what, this is still a nice play style for getting these runes down quickly and then blowing them up. On top of that, this is the one build where I allowed myself to do Eternal Damnation just because I really think if you're playing a mana build, Eternal Damnation is the S tier amulet for a mana build because it's just a little bit less flat mana than, for example, a foible, but you get a whole lot of mitigation and, and mitigation is really the thing mana builds kind of how I struggle to get. Generally, when you're doing mana builds, you can't go for auras, so it's harder for you to get defenses. And this, I think, is a nice little solution where you can get some decent defenses for a build without having all those defensive auras to back you up only getting to do basically one aura plus like clarity on your life pool if you did that for example so 
that's what I went with. I went with Replica Lore Weave. It's some of the highest mana you can get on a chest. On top of that, it has some decent crit, which works if we wanted to try to tie in crit. I ended up opting to tie in crit. Originally, I was doing Elemental Overload. The uptime was just terrible, and my gem links kind of sucked. So I decided, you know what? I'll just swap it to crit. I'll grab, grab a couple crit passives here and here. I'll have Lore Weave for crit. I'll have a Diamond Flask for crit. And then I will have, last but not least, some crit gems. And I don't know if my crit's actually decent or not. I think it's probably okay. And on top of that, Kalisa's Grace gives you basically 2.7 flat crit this was a, a base that isn't expensive no one uses these gloves so you can get a spell crit base for pretty cheap i got these gloves for 30c and ultimately i think it means our crit is okay i don't know what our crits actually at it's probably like 50 60 70 percent ish would be my guess uh maybe with assassin's mark it goes up to 80 percent i'm not sure point is that's the setup i went for the character mana stacking plus flash stacking plus storm bind it's an awkward play style now let me go ahead and show you what it looks like in a map on our husbands i will also say you'll notice in my pob i have two different setups for storm bind basically you can set up a link support that works with rune blast itself and a link support that works with storm bind itself so i can set down the runes with my six link for storm bind and that's the damage and rune blast i'm just basically scaling into my arcane surge my faster casting and infused channeling which gives me infusion and gives me arcane surge and allows me to cast the skill really fast so, and those are like basically some of the only supports that work with rune blast you can see basically if i went for the uh the rune blast that's the links i have here which are aoe crit they're all these extra things none of these supports really work on the storm the rune blast so you'll see the rune blast over here is the same one linked with all these extra links and none of those support it so it's a bit thing where you will kind of want two different setups one for rune blast and one for storm bind for it to work properly now let's get in maps and let's show you guys what this, this character looks like mapping i will i'll just come out and say it. it's not it's not a good mapper right it's a very awkward um play style because it's got that two button play style right you have to keep doing basically placing rooms popping them it's a two button play style I, i'm not gonna try to pretend it's gonna be good for mapping it's just not right but outside of that it is actually pretty crevasing and it's it's nice to get those pops it's one of those things where i actually do kind of like this skill it's 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 winning me over a bit you know it's something where i've been um what's the word I've, I've, as i play it I, I i do like the status the satisfying weird clunkiness the weird skill it's a shame it's not a bit better right it's a shame it's not a bit better right place all the runes get this stuff and then go for the big one shot oh we didn't hit him unfortunate so let's try to finish them off all right unfortunately we didn't one shot in there but sometimes you crit sometimes you don't sometimes i probably didn't have my conductivity or my assassin's mark or my uh sigil of power i have a trigger wand for those mods so i'm not exactly timing these correctly for putting those down who knows if i had them up maybe i did maybe i didn't i don't know it doesn't really matter point is that shows you what the character looks like in a map i i like the character quite a bit in terms of like weirdness and in terms of power per value but ultimately it is a clunky character it doesn't map well and uh it's an awkward play style right so hopefully you guys enjoy this video for the Stormbind pathfinder i think if i was going to do it all over after playing this setup i do think the correct play if you wanted to make Stormbind, if i was going to change something to make this character work and make this character better i would swap pathfinder for hierophant for the aoe the power charge node and maybe the node that gives life leech i think potentially is what i would go for and then what i would end up doing is i would be getting a trader into the build i would drop the crit flask and i would get myself the same idea of these basically set up for mana sustain of laviana's but i would have that 100 percent aoe from hierophant i'd have transfiguration of mind i would have all that extra mana scaling and i think it would overlap much much better because right now with my current aoe scaling which isn't much it's basically just the increased aoe gem i'm only really overlapping for nine hits at most i think with with hierophant then you start to get the bigger the bigger overlaps and you start to hit much harder i think that's my theory at least there also is a world where you can maybe go inquisitor and steal well, the Inquisitor route, you don't steal the AoE node because the AoE node costs a billion dollars. Uh, you could steal Divine Guidance, technically. So, anyways, that's the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this version or this version of uh, Stormbind and this attempt at the 10 Div Challenge. And to close it all out, we have what we did for the challenge, which was we did six out of eight. We only brick Exarch and we only brick Cirrus. Exarch, I think I could do if I had another attempt at it. I think with a little bit of better playing, I think I'd do Exarch. Cirrus, I don't think I ever do. Cirrus is a fight where the boss teleports more than any other boss, and we need the setup time to put our runes down, to then charge the runes, to then blow up the runes. 
and simply with how fast he teleports around it's very hard to get that set up in and actually hit him so Sirius is one of those fights where i think i'd have to play to absolute perfection i'm just not that good at the game to to pull it off but still pretty happy with this character bringing home six or five out of seven of the ubers and almost doing my first x arc it's the one character i've had so far where i have been able to survive the ball phase consistently and that i'm pretty happy with because i usually die to the ball phase every single time this character was tanky enough to take quite a few balls in a row and maybe i've gotten a little bit better as i've been doing the challenge on x arc hopefully by the end of this challenge i can clean x arc on at least one of these builds as always hopefully you guys enjoyed the video take care and peace out